YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with another Washington football team video. And in today's video, I'm coming on here to preview Washington, Seattle, Monday Night Football, 8 p.m. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video about the NFL. Or in this case, our Washington football team. Let's get straight into today's video. So Wilson, Heineke, primetime. 8 p.m. Both teams fighting for their season. Washington coming in off of a big win versus the Carolina Panthers. Four and six, very much alive. Seattle, on the other hand, fighting for their season as they lost yet another game to the Cardinals last week. And mind you, no Cole, no Kyler Murray. So that team is really distraught right now. They're three and seven. But again, they can be very dangerous because they still have Russell Wilson. They still have DK Metcalf and they're fighting for their season. So that's where pretty much that scares me right there. They're fighting for their season. Anytime you have three, you have a chance. Russell Wilson, in my opinion, is a big reason why this offense has not been performing how some may have thought with Russell Wilson in the lineup. And that's because, in my opinion at least, I felt like he came back too soon from that hand in the injury. And I personally think he didn't let it heal fully. I think he's still dealing with some pain and he's not allowed to grip the ball and throw it how he wants to. So I, that's just my personal theory. I could very well be wrong, but I just don't think he's fully... 100% because if you look at it like this, when this injury first happened and they put him on IR, Russell Wilson wasn't really set to return until after this game this Monday night. It was just so happened that he returned so fast. I guess the, the injury healed fast and he did some workouts. It said that he was working his hand like nine hours a day just to get back. So he really wasn't supposed to be back until after our game. So I don't think he's 100%. That hand can't be. And you can see the play on the field. It's not It's not looking like he's 100% at all. And he's playing a big role in, in this uh, lack of success what uh, Seattle is having this off se uh, um, this season. And honestly, a lot of people were saying their offensive coordinator is pretty bad too. So it's just a whole debacle going on, going on with Seattle. But again, they have three. They have DK. They have Tyler Lockett. And again, we're still Washington. I know we have a two-game win streak, but we're still Washington. So go figure. This will be the game that they get back on track, right? Even though they, they've been looking bad against backup quarterbacks and everybody else, watch. This is the game they get back on track. No, in all seriousness, man, I've had us losing this game. And and I think we have a good chance of winning, obviously, but I just don't know. I have a bad feeling about this game. I feel like this is a game that Washington should very much win, but this is a game that we're going to let Seattle hang around, hang around and, and even though Russell Wilson may not be 100%, in my opinion, he's going to find a way to pull it off. Man, I just have that gut feeling, but hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully Washington, Heineke, the offense, and the defense can keep it up and we can make it three in a row because, again, if you guys didn't watch my video from yesterday or day before yesterday, I urge you guys to go watch it because I broke down how Washington could not only get a wild card but still win the NFC East and one part of that video came true yesterday as the Dallas Cowboys lost to the Oakland Raiders or the Las Vegas Raiders in overtime on Thanksgiving so if you guys don't know and I'll give you a quick synopsis if Washington wins their next two against Seattle and gets uh, Las Vegas and the Dallas Cowboys lose their next one because they already lost their first one to Oak um, to Las Vegas yesterday if they lose their next one to New Orleans that puts them at seven and five and if we win our next two that puts us at six and six and that showdown december 12th against um against the cowboys at home at fedex at our crib could be for first place so it's a huge huge game and what in uh dallas they already held up their end of the bargain for part one now it's time for us to hold up our end of the bargain on monday night football where we need to go beat seattle but again I want to win. I hope we win. And I pray that we win. I'm going to be rooting for us to win. I just don't have a good feeling about it. Now, let's get into a reason why I'm starting to somewhat come from out of that not having a good feeling stage. So let's read this injury report per John Kime of today's practice. So practice report. Did not practice. Sam Cosme, Tyler Larson, Ricky Seals-Jones. That's not good for Sam Cosme's part. But again, again, again. When we have so much depth at the offensive line, these injuries, they don't scare me as much as if it was any other position because this is the this is the position group that we have the most depth in. Sam Cosme goes down, okay, boom, we just put in Cornelius Lucas. You know what I'm saying? And then if Tyler Larson went down as he did, West Retcher stepped right in and played well. So I'm pretty cool. Um, obviously, I, I would love to have Sam Cosme, but I'm pretty cool with how this injury report is for the people that didn't practice. Ricky Seals-Jones, he didn't practice. Again, he's dealing with the hip, but hey, we we might be getting somebody else back. Logan Thomas. I'm um, moving on to limited now. 
Running back Antonio Gibson, Cole Holcomb, Adam Humphreys, J.D. McKissick, Curtis Samuel, Brandon Sheriff. They all practice. And you know the name that I'm so happy about. Even though I said we should have put him on IR. If he feels good to go, we put him out there. And I'm going to be happy to see him out there. That is Curtis Samuel. So for the second day in a row, Curtis Samuel was limited in practice. And the video that John Kine posted, he looked really, really good. Again, I was, every like, like majority of us, we wanted to put him on IR. But again, I said if they wanted to play him and they felt like he was pretty much um good to go why not put him out there it's not like i don't want to see him out there i do but i don't want to continue to hurt the future but again we're fighting for a playoff spot we're fighting for our uh possibly the division and if curtis think he's gonna be good put him out there man he's only gonna make this offense better and he's our number two option just imagine how good this offense is gonna be with terry with curtis in there and then go to full john bates and shaka tony so we're relatively healthy only guys that didn't practice and probably not gonna play is sam cosby tyler Lawson and Ricky So Jones and for the most part we knew most of those guys weren't going to play. Alrighty so at the time of this recording Seattle's Friday injury report hasn't been put out but without another video tomorrow we're going over the full injury report to see who's in who's out again we have another day to rest due to us playing on Monday so it's no rush you know what I'm saying but as of right now Seattle's injury report isn't out but for us again I think we're coming in here relatively healthy we're getting the guy back in Curtis Samuel hopefully hopefully he looked really good the last couple days and I love Logan Thomas wasn't on that list, but he did practice, so I still have high hopes for Logan Thomas possibly playing. But other than that, man, that is just a, a, a good, good injury report. Now, let's get into how we could win this game. We got to get pressure on Russell Wilson. It's simple, as simple as that. We got to get pressure on Russell Wilson. He hasn't done good against the pressure. And again, I don't think that hand is 100%. You know what I'm saying? Their weapons are off as DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett hasn't really been involved in the offense um, at, at all for the last couple of weeks. Alex Collins doesn't scare me as a running back. Chris Carson is not playing. So I think we're in a good shape. When you look at the defensive side of things, Carlos Dunlap is another guy that, that's really good. But other than, other than Carlos Dunlap and Jamal Adams and Bobby Wagner, they really don't scare me, guys. You know what I'm saying? But again, these are the most scary games. When you have players that don't scare you, those could be the most scary games, especially Especially for this team that's fighting for their life. This is why it scares me so much. Not only because they have Russell Wilson. Even though he may not be healthy. I'm still scared of him. They are fighting for their lives, guys. They are three. They're worse than us as far as fighting for our lives. Now, we're fighting for our lives. We're fighting for our season because we can't lose much. But these guys, they literally cannot lose anymore. If they lose, their season is literally done. So, they're fighting for their lives. I don't want anybody to come in this game thinking it's going to be a piece of cake. I pray that we blow these boys out, but that's not going to happen. We're not a team that really blows teams out, especially a team led by Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson. They're not, they're not going to let that happen, man. And then, again, they're fighting for their lives, man. They're 3-7. and seven. If they go to 3-8, and eight, their season is done. So they're, we're going to get their best shot, man. So we better be prepared, and I know we will, but I really just want to see us win this game because if we win this game, man, that is just going to give this team even more much moment, momentum going into the game versus the Raiders. And on top of that, that's going to make this division this division race even more close. But again, one game at a time. But uh, we have to get pressure on Russell Wilson. Again, they have weapons, but again, they don't scare me on either side of the ball. You know what I'm saying? Outside of DK Metcalf and outside of Tyler Lockett, they don't scare me. You know what I'm saying? A compromise, Russell Wilson. We can get pressure, especially up the middle with Ron Payne, Jonathan Allen. We should be in good hands. Shaka Tony's going to be back, so that's good. Um, but I really like what I saw from KC2 Hill, especially in the run game. Uh, and uh, uh, um, James Smith Williams, he was pretty good too on the edge. And uh, how about Cole Holcomb and Jamin Davis, man? And uh, Landon Collins and Cameron Curl all playing around the box, playing so, so good on Christian McCaffrey. If we can contain Christian McCaffrey, I'm pretty sure we shouldn't struggle with Alex Collins again they don't have much weapons that really scare me but again they have three three is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL so I, I think they still have a chance and I'm still scared about this game I know my boy Pedro was like he he think we're gonna win and uh he's in the same spot as I was in when we were in Tampa Bay when I said I don't know why we're gonna win but I have a feeling we're gonna win that's his stance on the Seattle game and I, and I and I hope so man but I just don't have a strong feeling about it I feel like this is gonna be one of these games um, where Washington just doesn't come out looking the sharpest but again 
I hope and pray that I'm wrong because I want us to come out here and not even make it a competition. Get it, get out into an early lead and run away with it, man. I, I really hope it's one of these games where we can run the ball well, set up the play action down the field. Heineke could just have another mag immaculate game, a magical game, or just another mwah, type of game from Heineke, man. You know what I'm saying? I want to eat some more W's, man. Although I'm not too confident in it, let's get to my prediction. I have Washington winning, yes sir, even though I'm not confident and I feel like this is a, this could be, I wouldn't say a trap game, but this could be a game where Washington, you know, know they should win, but they very well could have a letdown. But I, so, even though I'm not confident, I'm going to take Washington 31 to 20 in a Monday Night Football victory for the boys and that makes it three in a row for the Washington football team. So yeah, man, there you have it. As always, it's me and Boy Juan Gotti. Like, comment, subscribe. Hello to the Washington football team. Don't forget, I will be live on Rio Robinson's channel tonight with Pedro Smith at 7.30 p.m. So make sure you guys come through for that. As always, it's me and Boy Juan Gotti. I'm out. Peace. Jimmy! Jimmy! Uh, cross me one time. That's gonna get you pop. Get you pop.